Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today we're going to talk about the graduated filter in Lightroom. There's all these different tips and techniques that I want to share with you in this video, and I think you'll find them very, very useful. Now, to get the graduated filter, of course, in Lightroom, you're in the develop module. Right here, this is the little tool well. You click on that and you open the graduated filter. And typically, you would just go somewhere on the image where you want to put the graduated filter. Click with the left mouse button and drag down. Now, you can see I have exposure all the way down just so you could see it. Now, notice as I'm dragging it, I could tilt it. I could even put it upside down if I want. And Talking about upside down, if you wanted an upside down one, let's say I just wanted to have the graduated filter on the water, all I really need to do is click and push up, and then you'll have it upside down. I'm going to have it right side up, though, for this. Now, you notice that I could tilt it any way I want. Now, if I want it perfectly horizontal, hold the shift key in while you're drawing it, and that shift key will allow you to put it perfectly horizontal, and if you try to tilt it, it will only tilt at 90 degree in of intervals like that. So it will snap to those 90 degree uh, intervals. Now you'll notice as I'm dragging it, either with the shift key held in or with the shift key out, the way it kind of gets applied is the uh, cursor is on the bottom line. And as I pull down, it's keeping the top line static and it's drawing the other two lines apart from each other and that top line. So you could see how we're applying it. Now there's a different way to apply it. What you could do is hold the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac. And if you hold that key in, you'll notice as I drag, it's keeping the middle line static and it's drawing the other two lines out from the middle line. I prefer to do it this way because quite often I want that middle line in a very specific spot. So I find this to be more effective for me. And then what I'll do on an image like this that has a horizon line in it and I want the graduated filter to be perfectly horizontal, I'll hold the shift and alt option key in together. And then when I do that, it keeps it perfectly horizontal and draws out from that middle line. So that's the way I almost always apply a graduated filter. So we have this graduated filter um, applied. Let's just take it off for a second. Now, as far as this specific image, let's talk about this for a moment. Um, I have like, you know, a blue sky, but there's water that also has blue in it, but I'd like to darken the blue sky. Now, probably a more common way of doing this is you go to the HSL uh, tab and you go to the luminance section and you'll go to blue and pull that down and we're making the blue sky darker. But if you look, I'm also making the water darker too. And I really don't want to make that water darker. I just want to make the blue sky darker. So that's where we would use this graduated filter. So again, I'll go to the graduated filter. I'm going to hold on my Mac the shift key and the option key in at the same time. Of course, on a PC, that's shift and alt. And then when I click, I'm drawing it right where I want it with that middle line static right where I need it to be. Now again, I have exposure all the way down just so you could see where it is. So I'm gonna reset that. Now, I mentioned I just really want that blue sky to be darker. Well, I could do that with contrast. If I push contrast to the right, you can see I'm making the blue darker. Now I could then maybe come in with exposure as well and turn that a little bit. But you'll see what's happening when I do this. Look at these cliffs over here off in the distance. As I'm doing that, I'm affecting those as well. So I don't want to affect those. And I'm going to move my graduate filter down just a little bit because I wasn't affecting all the sky. But anyway, I'm making these cliffs uh, darker. Here, I'll turn the entire graduated filter off and watch those cliffs over there on the left. And then when I turn it back on, I'm making those darker. I really don't want to do that. Now, what I can do is I could go over here and click on where it says brush right here. And it opens up brush tools down at the bottom. Now what we want to do is we want to erase the graduated filter from that area. So I'll click on Erase. I'm going to make sure Auto Mask is not clicked because I just want everywhere I brush to remove the graduated filter from that area. I'm going to use the left bracket key to get a smaller brush. The right bracket key makes it larger. And I could then click in and just remove the graduated filter from this area. You can see how I do that. Now, 
Another way of doing it, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to hit Command Z on my Mac, Control Z on a PC to just undo that brush stroke. Now, another way I could do that is instead of using the brush, I'll go back to my graduated filter. I'll go down to the range mask and I'll click on that and I'll click on color. And when I do that, I have this eyedropper. Click on that eyedropper to make it active and I'll click on the blue sky. And watch when I click and watch these cliffs, all right? So I'm going to click right now and you'll see those cliffs brightened up. Now it's only affecting the blue sky. So if I turn down exposure, you could see how it's just affecting the blue sky. Now I could add to this range of blue that this is affecting. I clicked once here. If I just click again, it will remove the click that I did here and apply it here. If I want to add to it, hold the shift key in and you'll see when I do that, the dropper has a plus sign next to it. So I'll click there as well. So now it's affecting that blue sky. If I want to add a little more, hold that shift key in and click. And now it's adding that blue sky. So you can see how it's adding more of the blue sky, but it's not affecting any of the cliffs off in the distance. So you can take it down a little more. So I'm making my dark sky blue, darker blue, and I'm not affecting the water like I didn't want to do. See? Maybe just like that's pretty good. So now we've done that. We'll put this eyedropper away. We'll put it back in its little cubby holder there. And now let's say, um, for the sake of argument, let's do this. Let's turn contrast way up. Let's turn exposure way up. All right, that's way too much, right? And I happen to have moved two sliders. Let's just move some more. Let's turn texture and clarity up too. Okay, way up. All right, so it looks ridiculous, right? Well, I could come back in and just reduce all those sliders individually if I want, or if I prefer, go right on this little button right there. Now, if I hover over it, you'll see you'll get that overlay showing you where the graduated filter is affecting. Also, you could do that over here, down here in the toolbar, this little um, bit of real estate down here. If I click on this, it will show that overlay there. You also have uh, the option to show that pin auto. That means when I'm hovering over the image, you'll see the pin. When I come off, it's gone. I call it a button. It's more accurately called a pin. You also could change it to always be showing it. That means it's always there, of course. Selected, that means if you have more than one graduated filter, only the one that is active will be showing. And never. Now, of course, I never use never. I usually use auto. But I got sidetracked. What I want to show you is if you go over this little pin or button as I call it and you hold in the alt or option key again it's alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac look at the cursor it turns into this horizontal arrow with a vertical line. What that's encouraging you to do is click and drag to the right or left. If I click and drag to the left look at the sliders over there on the uh, right hand side as I move it it's reducing those sliders or moving those sliders back towards zero all of them together. So you could see how you could reduce or increase, if I drag to the right, those sliders just very quickly. So if you find that after you put on a graduated filter and it's either not enough or too much, just hold that alt or option key in and drag left to make it less of an effect or right to make it more of an effect. Now another way you could do that is if you go over to the graduated filter tool itself, and you see this little triangle right there? Click on that. And when you do that, you have an amount slider. This is the same exact thing. You could reduce it this way and it will put all those, I'll open it back up. It'll put all these sliders back towards their kind of neutral position. Now I'm going to undo uh, the texture and clarity and increase that a little bit and that. All right. So we kind of learned a lot of tricks now with this graduated filter. The last thing you could do is when you go over the image, if you right click right on that little uh, pin, or as I call it, button, you can see that we have some um, options here. We could duplicate it, we could delete it, we could reset all those filter brushes, our graduated filter brushes, and reset the graduated filters themselves. But we're going to go and duplicate it right here. All right, and when I duplicate it, it's as though we have two graduated filters on on there. And as a matter of fact, we do. If I just grab this pin and pull it down, you'll see now there's two there, right? So we do have two. What I could do though, is I could come off from the middle and I could flip this one around. So I flip that one upside down. 
So we have this upside down one. And now if I take this one, you can see how it's affecting the water. But remember, I have a range mask on there. So you see how it's just affecting a little bit of the water? Because I have a range mask from the original one and we duplicated it. So it's duplicating those, those uh, eyedropper clicks that I did. So I need a new range mask. I need to replace this range mask. Just click on that eyedropper. You can see how they're all active up there. Just click down here. It will replace all three of those on this second graduated filter only. That's the one that's active. Let me just show you a minute. We have the two, but only one of them is active, the one that is upside down. The other one is inactive. So when I click on the eyedropper, it's showing the three graduated or the three um, eyedroppers we used to get the color range. Well, now we're just going to click on the water. Now it moved it down to the water for that single graduated filter. For example, let me put that back. Bring contrast down. Let's bring exposure up a little bit on that water. Okay. Now let's go to that other graduated filter. That's the one over there. I got to kind of move this one out of the way. All right. Let's try to make that one active. Oops. There we go. Okay. This other one's active. I'm going to go back and grab the eyedropper. You see those three original eyedropper clicks I did? They're still there for that top graduated filter. It's just that we replaced the bottom uh, eyedropper click there. So you can see how that works. Now we can move this back in position. So I have two graduated filters on this uh, image. And uh, that's as easy as it is, how you could apply graduated filters uh, to an image and different things you could do to manipulate that graduated filter so it uh, behaves exactly like you want it to behave. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.